up, everybody? So today we're going to talk about standard enthalpy of reaction. We're going to talk about what it is, and we're going to talk about how to calculate it. So standard enthalpy of reaction has this symbol. It's a delta H with a degree sign as a superscript, and an RXN, that stands for reaction, as a subscript. And essentially what standard enthalpy of reaction is, is it's the enthalpy change, or the amount of heat, that is given off or absorbed by a chemical reaction under standard conditions. Now, if you don't know what standard conditions are, feel free to check out my previous video. My previous video is sort of like a part one, and this video is like a part two. Uh, in that last video, uh, I basically go over what a standard state is, what standard conditions are, and also uh, what a standard enthalpy of formation is. So standard enthalpy of formation, that is definitely something that we're gonna have to know before continuing with this video. If we don't know what that is, then we might get a little frustrated and lost, and I don't want that to happen. So if you're fuzzy on these topics or you don't know what the heck I'm talking about, please uh, click that button over there that says part one. Okay, so enough about my last video. Now let's get into this video. Now this video, uh, at the very end of the video, I'm gonna show you a formula for how to calculate the standard enthalpy of reaction using standard enthalpies of formation. And if you'd like to skip ahead straight to the formula, uh, click that skip icon up there. That'll take you right to the formula. However, if you like me and you wanna know the actual theoretical knowledge behind the formula and why the formula works, then stick around because we're gonna start explaining that right now. Okay. So imagine we have this reaction right here. It's uh, the combustion of butane, and it's given by this chemical equation down here. We've got two moles of butane reacting with 13 moles of oxygen to produce eight moles of carbon dioxide and 10 moles of water. So let's say we wanna find the standard, standard enthalpy of reaction for this reaction. Well, one way to do it might be to carry out the reaction, take careful measurements, and uh, see if we can't figure out the amount of heat that's given off by this reaction uh, and make sure we're under standard conditions. Um, but that's pretty complicated, and it turns out we actually don't have to go through all that trouble. In fact, we can actually look a few numbers up in a table, and we can calculate the standard enthalpy of reaction without ever having to run the reaction. So it's a very powerful position to be in where you can you know, figure out whether it's gonna be exothermic or endothermic uh, just by looking some things up in a table and doing a couple of fancy calculations. So let's get into why and how these calculations work, okay? So in order to understand this, we're gonna to have to understand standard enthalpies or standard heats of formation. So what a standard heat of formation is, essentially, is the amount of heat that's given off when a compound is formed from its constituent elements. So you can imagine a reaction where an elements come together and they form a compound, and that, heat of formation is given by this symbol, delta H with a degree sign superscript and an F subscript. F stands for formation, obviously. So that's delta H of formation. So it would therefore follow that if we have the opposite of formation, in other words, if we have the decomposition of a compound where a compound is breaking apart into its constituent elements, then that would the, uh, the standard enthalpy associated with this process would be the exact opposite or the negative of the standard heat of formation, okay? So we can use this uh, to basically devise a scheme for how to calculate the standard heat uh, of a chemical reaction. So we can, again, we can do this by devising a scheme. And in this scheme, we're gonna imagine that the reaction takes place in two steps, which I'll call steps one and two. So in the first step, we're gonna imagine that the reactants are breaking apart into their constituent elements. Now this may or may not be how the reaction actually takes place, but that doesn't really matter because enthalpy is a state function. It doesn't really matter how we get from start to finish. It just matters what our starting points and ending points are. So in the first step, again, we're gonna have reactants breaking apart into elements. And in the second step, we're gonna imagine that those elements come back together to form the products of the chemical reaction. In the end, if we add these two steps together, we're gonna to get reactants forming products. Just like a mathematical equation, if you add two equations together and there's something on either side, uh, then those things are gonna cancel out. So in this case, elements and elements, they're gonna cancel out. So we have reactants forming products. Now for that first step, reactants uh, breaking apart into elements, uh, the standard enthalpy associated with this process is going to be given by, uh, I'll call it delta H1, 
and it's going to be the negative sum of all of the standard enthalpies of formation for those reactants. So again, it's negative because it's not formation, it's decomposition, and that sigma there, that Greek sigma, that simply means the sum of. Okay, so we're taking all of those standard enthalpies of formation, we're multiplying them by negative one, and then we're adding them all together to get delta H1. Okay, so for the step two, where we have the elements forming the products, well, that's simply going to be, we'll call it delta H2, and that's simply going to be the positive sum of all of the standard enthalpies of formation for all of those products. Okay, now if we add together those two delta H values, we know this from Hess's law, that if a reaction is uh, can be expressed as a sum of other reactions, then the delta H for that reaction is simply going to be the sum of the delta H's for the individual steps that were added up to make that reaction. So to get the standard enthalpy of reaction, we simply add together the delta H values for those two steps. So why don't we try this with a real chemical reaction? Why don't we try this with the combustion of butane? So in order to do this, we're going to have to look up the standard enthalpies of formation for all four of these compounds, okay? So again, we want to find the standard heat of reaction. How much heat is given off by this reaction under standard conditions? So we're going to do that same thing where we split the reaction up into two steps. So in the first step, we're going to have the decomposition of two moles of butane. In step two, uh, we're going to have the formation of eight moles of CO2 and 10 moles of H2O. Now you may be looking at that oxygen, like why don't we have the decomposition of oxygen? Well, oxygen is a pure element in its standard state, so we don't have to worry about it. It's going to have a standard heat of formation of zero, so we can ignore the oxygen. Just focus on the compounds, not the elements. So those are our two steps. So if we examine step one in greater detail, again that's the decomposition of two moles of butane, okay? So when this happens, uh, we're going to get this equation. We have two moles of butane, breaking down into eight moles of carbon, graphite, that's the most stable form of carbon, so that's carbon in its standard state. And then we have 10 moles of diatomic hydrogen gas. So again, we can look up the standard enthalpy of formation for this, uh, for uh, butane, just in the back of your chemistry textbook. There's an appendix somewhere that has standard enthalpies of formation for a ton of compounds. And if we look that up, we're gonna find that the standard enthalpy of formation for butane is negative 125.7 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so this is how much heat is given off when one mole of butane is formed from its elements. However, we've got two moles of butane, so we need to take that into account when we calculate delta H for this step. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply two by the negative standard enthalpy of formation for butane. Again, it's negative because we don't have formation, we have decomposition, the opposite of formation. So again, we're going to take 2, we're going to multiply it by minus negative 125.7 kilojoules per mole, and so this is going to become positive 251.4 kilojoules per mole, okay? So we just calculated the standard enthalpy of formation for that first step, so we're going to kind of remember that and we're going to use it later once we figure out the standard enthalpy of formation uh, for the other step, okay? So once we get into the step two, uh, step two is actually going to have two parts to it because we have the formation of two different compounds, CO2 and H2O. So step two is going to be divided into, again, two smaller steps, which I'm going to call steps 2A and 2B. Now step 2A, that's going to be the formation of eight moles of carbon dioxide, so this is an equation that represents that. The second step, or the second part of the second step, step 2b, uh, we're going to have the formation of 10 moles of water, and this is the equation that describes uh, that process. So if we go back to step 2a, the formation of 8 moles of CO2, well we're going to have to look up the heat of formation, standard heat of formation, for CO2, and we're going to find that to be negative 393.5 kilojoules per mole. But again, to get the standard heat for step 2a, we're going to have to multiply that term by 8 because we don't have just one mole of CO2. We have 8 moles of CO2. So we're going to have 8 times minus 393.5 kilojoules per mole, and we're going to get minus 3,148.0 kilojoules per mole. So that's step 2a. Now we've got to do the same thing for step 2b. 
If you look in the back of your chemistry textbook to try to find the standard enthalpy of formation for water, then that's going to be negative 241.8 kilojoules per mole. But again, to get the standard heat of formation for, or excuse me, the standard enthalpy of step 2b, uh, we're going to have to multiply this by 10. Because we don't have one mole of water, we've got 10 moles of water. So we're going to take 10, multiply it by minus 241.8 kilojoules per mole, and we're going to get minus 2,418.0 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so that is the difficult part of the calculation, okay? So now what we can do is we can take those three values that we just calculated and we can sort of bring it all together, okay? So if we have step one, if we have step 2a, and we have uh, step 2b, uh, these are all of those uh, reactions, all of those decompositions and formations, and we have their associated uh, standard enthalpies uh, on the right-hand side. So those are the things that we just calculated. So what we can do is we can sort of observe and check to see if these three reactions, when added together, give us that equation above, the combustion of butane. So we're going to have to do some canceling out to see if they sum up to that, <clears throat> to that above equation. So it looks like my eight moles of graphite carbon are going to cancel out. Let's see, does anything else cancel out? Uh, looks like my 10 moles of diatomic hydrogen gas are going to cancel out. And so, yeah, it looks like we've got the above equation. We've got the two moles of butane on the left. Uh, we've got, in total, 13 moles of oxygen. We have eight moles of oxygen over there, and we've got five moles of oxygen right there. So that adds up to 13 moles. And then on the right-hand side, we've got our eight moles of CO2, and we've got our 10 moles of water. So these three equations do add up to the combustion of butane. So it therefore follows that the standard enthalpy of reaction for the combustion of butane is simply going to be these three delta H values that we just calculated previously added together. Okay. So when we add these two things together, we're going to get minus 5,314.6 kilojoules per mole. So this is a highly exothermic chemical reaction which you probably didn't need to <laughs> you didn't need to calculate this value in order to know that you could just feel the heat coming off of uh, a sample of butane burning like from a, a cigarette lighter like we saw uh, in in the uh, in the title slide okay now luckily uh, when we want to calculate the standard enthalpy of reaction for a chemical reaction we don't have to go through all of that stuff that we just did we can sort of streamline this process into one easy to follow formula okay so let's examine the formula by which to calculate standard heat of reaction. So this is the formula right here. So it looks kind of complicated, but it's really not. Allow me to explain. So uh, basically what we're doing is we're taking the sum of the standard heats of formation for all of our products multiplied by our stoichiometric coefficients for the products. So that's what that lowercase n stands for. So again, that Greek letter sigma, that means we're summing them together. Delta H, that's just standard heat of formation. And then the lowercase n, that is the coefficient for the products. And we are subtracting from that the sum of the standard heats of formation for the reactants multiplied by their sto stoichiometric coefficients. So again, standard heat of formation, that's the delta H F. Uh, the N, that's going to be the coefficients for the products. The N sub P, that's the coefficients for the products. And then the N sub R, that's going to be the coefficients for the reactants. So before we end the video, we're going to uh, actually calculate the standard heat of reaction using this formula. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so this problem tells us to calculate the standard heat of reaction for the following reaction. So we've got one mole of zinc reacting with two moles of HCl to produce one mole of zinc chloride and one mole of hydrogen gas. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply that formula that we saw in the previous slide. So we're going to take the sum of the standard heats of formation of our products multiplied by their stoichiometric coefficients, and we're going to subtract from that the sum of the standard heats of formation for all of our reactants multiplied by their stoichiometric coefficients. So it's going to be a pretty long-winded calculation, uh, but we're definitely going to have to calculate a few, or we're going to have to look up a couple of standard heats of formation. So... Uh, the only standard heats of formation that we really have to consider are for the compounds, which on the reactant side, we've got HCl, 
And on the product side, we've got zinc chloride. Uh, the zinc and the hydrogen, those are just plain old elements. Those aren't compounds. So their standard heats of formation are zero. So we don't have to really look them up. So if we look at the standard heat of formation for HCl, uh, and again, this just comes out of a table out of my textbook, uh, that's going to be negative 167.2 kilojoules per mole. And then if we look up the same thing for zinc chloride, uh, that's going to be a delta H of formation of negative 415.1 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so now that we have those two pieces of information, we're going to plug them into our formula. Okay, so again, our formula is going to be 1 times the delta H of formation for zinc chloride. Uh, again, it's a 1 because there's an understood coefficient of 1 next to the zinc chloride in our balanced chemical equation. Uh, we're going to add that to 1 times the delta H of formation for hydrogen gas. So that's our sum right there for our products. And then we're going to subtract from that the similar sort of sum for the reactants. So we're going to add together uh, 1 times the standard heat of formation for zinc plus 2 times the standard heat of formation for HCl. And again, there's a 2 there because we have 2 moles of HCl given by our balanced chemical equation. Now again, this formula is going to uh, simplify a lot more because, like I mentioned before, uh, the elements, hydrogen and zinc, they don't really have standard enthalpies of formation. They are exactly 0. So we can basically just cross out the delta H of hydrogen, and we can also cross out the delta H for zinc they're going to be zero. So this formula is going to simplify down to one times the delta H of formation for zinc chloride minus two times the delta H of formation for HCl. Okay, so if we uh, plug those values in, we're going to get one times minus 415.1 kilojoules per mole. And we're going to subtract from that two times the standard heat of formation of HCl, which is minus 167.2 kilojoules per mole. And our final result is going to be minus 80.7 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so this is an exothermic reaction. And again, we didn't even have to run this reaction to find that out. So I always think those kind of things are pretty amazing, where you, you just do a little bit of calculations, look up a couple of things in a book, and you're, you're where you want to be. So, all right, I hope this video was helpful. Uh, stay tuned for more videos in the near future. And as always, have a, have a good day.